I want to make a matter of record that I have brought this issue up four times in the Democratic Caucus. I have, uh, yesterday, I personally delivered to over 100 members of Congress copies of the analysis that I did that was documented uh, based, you know, re re relating to this privatization scheme that this administration developed even prior to the invasion of Iraq. So members of Congress uh, are going to have a great deal of difficulty as we move forward to say that, well, they didn't know. Uh, this has been brought up over and over and over. And so uh, I have been talking to members, we'll continue to do that this afternoon. This is a pivotal point in the war. If this gov our government is permitted to put pressure on the people of Iraq to privatize their oil, the war will never end. And I, I, and I believe that when you look at the track that, this, that these plans started before the war, and that the war has been proven to be based on lies, that Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction, Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11, or Al-Qaeda's role in 9-11, then you get to the real possibility that this war was about oil all along. And I believe that's a basis for war crimes. And so this is a very serious moment in this country's history. And we, you know, we have to look at what's going on here and take it with the utmost seriousness. And I'm uh, grateful for the people who are in the media who are here because uh, this has largely escaped the notice of the media in Washington, except for a few publications. I think that it is so vast in its implications that people have trouble grasping that this could actually be going on, that we actually could have prosecuted a war for oil. I just want to follow up, follow up quickly. Is this is this a defeat? The legislation that's going to go through now, a defeat for the progressive party. This is a defeat for the American people. The American people elected a Congress last November to get out of Iraq, not to have a democratic version of the war, or not to have the Democrats say, "Well, we just don't have the votes." Hello, I want everyone to listen to this. We didn't have to offer any legislation to end the war. Once you offer legislation, that's what the president wants. The American people must know that there was no need to offer any legislation at all. Money's in the pipeline to bring the troops home. Once you offer legislation, then you fall into the trap that says, well, we have to support the troops. You can keep the war going until kingdom come under the, uh, under the assumption that funding the war supports the troops. But the fact of the matter is, if you really support the troops, you get them out of there. So, you know, this. It is an absurdity, beyond belief, that we could say that we're supporting our troops by keeping this war going. Democrats took control of the House and the Senate in November based on public opposition to the war. Before the election, we had conference calls with our leaders, and we were told that, that the election in 2006 was about three things. Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. That's what we were told. Members of Congress were told that, and the American people were told that. Here we are on the, on the, uh, on the uh, eve of a moment when the Democrats will be responsible for keeping the war going into autumn, and essentially, we have to understand what's happening here. We're laying the groundwork for the continuation of the war through the end of President Bush's term. Now, people did not vote Democratic for that purpose. We have the ability, even at this late moment, to say we're not going to offer any bill at all. And so uh, this, is a, this is a very damaging matter for our Democratic Party. Now, I've stood up and challenged this every step of the way. I've warned my Democratic colleagues that we're reneging on a promise we made to the American people. I've pointed out another path that we could take embodied in H.R. 1234. I went to the caucus four times and, and raised the questions that uh, Ms. Juhas has stated here and chapter and verse, handing out information, analysis, twice, not once, four times before the caucus, twice on the floor of the House. I can show you my checklist. I talked to hundreds of members 
And so I think that this is a, a, uh, a moment of truth for the Democratic Party. This is a moment of truth. I, listen, I don't want to speculate except to say that I'm very disappointed. And, uh, you know, in addition to being an active member of the Democratic Caucus, I also happen to be a candidate for President of the United States. This is an issue in the presidential race as well. Because no one can say that they're for peace and keep voting for war. No one can say that they're for peace and vote for a resolution which creates the, the, the context for, for handing over the oil of Iraq to multinational oil companies, which will keep the war going forever. No one can say they're for peace and let the American troops stay there with this private army stay there, keeping the war going forever. This is an important moment in the history of our country. And that's why I have been relentless in, uh, in, in advancing this. And that's why to have uh, U.S. Labor Against the Law present, to have Antonio Juhas here, both of whom have uh, spoken out on this. Antonio Juhas has written uh, extensively about these issues. Listen, what I presented on the floor of the House yesterday for one hour, something that hasn't happened in years in this House, was not my opinion, it was documentation. This isn't something that we think he said. No, there is documented proof that what is going on here is an attempt to force the government of Iraq to give up control of its oil, the multinational oil interest, at a time when the U.S. is occupying the country. This is theft. You can't call it anything else. It is theft. And we have an obligation as Americans to, to stand for high ideals. This doesn't represent who we are as Americans. This doesn't represent the high ideals of this country. This doesn't represent truth and justice and all the things we believe in as Americans. This represents a dark side of, of, the, of this government, a side that needs to be exposed to the kind of sunlight which we have on this day. Uh, we, uh, thank you very much for being here.